Lakeland CE certified Chemmax chemical protective coveralls are made to a high specification with superior design and features. They provide excellent protection against a wide range of hazardous chemicals in a variety of applications and industries. However, the process of donning and doffing a coverall is at least as important as the design and quality of the coverall itself. An incorrectly worn or damaged coverall might not protect the wearer as it should, and the process of removing it after use is vital and often subject to the highest risk of contamination and potential injury. The following instructions provide users with a guide to appropriate donning and doffing of Lakeland Chemmax chemical protective coveralls. Our sales manager in Belgium, Steven de Decker, uses the Chemmax 1 coverall to demonstrate. It is important to ensure that the garment is not damaged before use, so first examine the packaging. Then, tear open the bag from the nick at the top and carefully remove the garment. The user instructions supplied provide a good guide on the certification, usage and do's and don'ts of using coveralls. Examine the garment to ensure no damage has been suffered during transit or storage. Where possible, lay it on a smooth flat surface such as a tabletop for further examination and to open the front fastening. Do not use a rough surface or a surface with any sharp edges as this could damage the suit. All Lakeland CE certified garment chest labels feature the required CE information for easy visual reference. For superior safety, Lakeland Chemmax garments feature a double zip and storm flap front fastening. This ensures a good seal is maintained at the front. Unzip the front fastening by carefully pulling down the outer zip fully and then repeat with the inner zip. You are now ready to begin donning. At this point, it is a good idea to remove any jewellery, watches, phones or similar items that might damage the garment. It is also vital to remove shoes before donning to avoid unnecessary stress on leg seams. It is also much easier to sit down for the first part of the donning procedure. In a seated position, push each foot into the corresponding leg of the garment. Remain seated whilst you put on your safety boots. Ensure the elasticated ankles of the garment are pulled down to cover the top of the boots. Where a garment with attached socks or booties is used, the sock should go inside the chemical boot and the outer flap is pulled down over the outside of the boot. Here, this is seen on the Lakeland Chemmax 3 coverall with attached socks. This provides an effective seal and prevents chemicals from running into the boot. Returning to our main donning process, you should now stand and push your arms into the sleeves one at a time. Take care not to put any strain on the garment at this stage. If you find it difficult, it may indicate you need a larger size. From this point you should have a colleague assist as they can ensure all closures are fastened correctly. The flap inside the outer zip should be folded back on itself and the outer zip can then be pulled up. Leave the last few inches until the hood is in position. Take care not to catch any fabric in the zips. The hood can now be carefully pulled over the head and adjusted for comfort. Once the hood is correctly positioned, the last few inches of the inner zip and then the outer zip can be fastened fully. Here you can see in close-up how after closing the inner zip, the inner flap should be folded back on itself before closing the outer zip. Once the hood is in position and comfortable, the outer flap tape can be sealed. Lakeland Chemmax garments feature an adhesive tape to the outer flap for additional security. Carefully peel off the tape backing from the top and part way down the flap. Fasten the top of the flap first and carefully press the flap into place moving gradually down the garment and peeling off the remaining backing. 
ensure there are no creases or folds that might offer a gap for penetration of a liquid. If a mask is to be worn, it should be donned before pulling on the garment hood. Ensure it is fitted correctly and comfortably as it will be difficult to adjust after the garment hood is in place. If the mask uses an air supply, remember to switch it on before donning. Pull the hood over the head carefully, again avoiding unnecessary stress and avoiding the clips on the face mask straps. Ensure the elastication of the hood fits to the face mask. Once again, ensure the inner flap is folded back on itself before fastening the outer zip of the garment. Make a final check to ensure the hood fits well to the mask. In some cases, depending on the application, it will be appropriate to tape up the joins between the mask and the hood. At this stage, the appropriate chemical gloves, the type indicated by a risk assessment, should be donned. Internal company procedures should indicate whether the glove should be worn inside or outside the sleeve following a suitable risk assessment of the application. In this case, the glove is shown worn inside the sleeve of the garment. Again, in some cases, it will be appropriate to apply a suitable tape to the join between the glove and the garment sleeve. It is worth noting that in EN14605 spray tests, tape is usually used to seal both the gloves and the hood connections. The Type 3 test uses pressure sprays and without taping penetration might occur causing a test failure. Thus, where an application involves strong sprays such taping might be necessary. If however only Type 4 sprays are involved, taping may be unnecessary. Information on the differences between Type 3 and 4 are available from Lakeland Sales Advisors. The decision to tape or not tape should be made following a risk assessment. Once completed, the tape should ensure a good seal around each glove join. As a final stage, the assistant should perform a thorough visual check on the garment and equipment connections to ensure there are no damages or gaps where a liquid chemical might penetrate. The wearer is now ready to work in a critical area confident they are suitably protected by their Lakeland Chemmax chemical protective garment. For several reasons Doffing of a chemical suit can be the most critical operation. The user is now free of the critical area hazard and might tend to relax and take less care, believing the danger is over. However, if the suit is contaminated, this can be the time with the highest risk of contamination of a wearer or assistant. In cases of heavy garment contamination, it may be appropriate that the wearer should pass through a decontamination shower to remove the worst of the contamination before garment removal. Essentially, doffing of the garment is the reverse of the donning process. First, the tape around the mask and gloves, if used, is removed. Do not remove the gloves at this stage. A suitable disposal bag should be used to contain the tape, gloves and garment immediately on removal. Again, it is essential to use an assistant for this operation, but in this case, because the suit might be contaminated, the assistant should also wear protective equipment. This might be only a suitable pair of gloves, but depending on the relative hazard, he or she might also be advised to wear full protective clothing whilst doffing is performed. Here, the assistant is wearing a Lakeland Micromax Type 5 and 6 coverall along with the chemical gloves. The garment should be removed from the hood down as far as possible in one fluid movement, 
turning the garment inside out in the process and placing the gloves inside the used garment. The assistant, whose gloves may now be contaminated from touching the outside of the coverall, should take great care not to touch the wearer or his clothing during this process, especially when unfastening the zip and removing the hood. The final stage of removing the boots and legs of the coverall should be done with the wearer in a seated position. It is important to stress that during the whole doffing process it is vital that neither the wearer nor assistant touch any part of the other's body or clothing with any contaminated gloves. Place the boots to one side for further decontamination if they are to be used again. The removed coverall, rolled up with the contamination inside, should be placed along with the gloves in a suitable bag for disposal. Finally, the assistant's gloves and coverall, if contaminated, should be placed in the disposal bag with the wearer's used PPE. Remember that the gloves may now be contaminated, so the assistant may need further assistance to remove them. Lakeland Chemmax chemical suits are designed and manufactured to the highest specifications and quality. Suitable procedures in use ensure a high level of protection. The donning and doffing procedures shown here may not be precisely appropriate to your situation. The requirements may vary in different applications and it is good practice to conduct a risk assessment of donning and doffing procedures just like any other hazardous situation. Our Lakeland sales managers will be happy to discuss your requirements. Ensuring proper donning and doffing procedures are in place will contribute to improved site safety. For more information, contact Lakeland.